Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting. Today, to the agenda, we'll talk about postmortem. Um, in fact, looking at the, the agenda, we have quite a lot of small topics to cover. So I think it would be just better if we take them one by one. So the first one uh, before we start is we release a new weekly release today. Everything went great, uh, it went well, and that's great considering the, the last week issue. Um, but I'll quickly mention the last week issue in the the postmortem. So let's take the first topic, which oh. is post. Sorry. Sorry, Damien, are you okay with the, the action we had from last week to apply what you learned from the weekly to the LTS? Is that settled? Yes, uh, we, I waited for two days release to validate it. And we have applied this on LTS validated by your Libyan team today. Yeah. So yeah, we just have to merge the PR and that's really great. And thanks for taking that initiative because this is typically the kind of uh, small issue that get that can affect us in LTS releases. Um, so the first topic that I want to briefly cover is over the last week, we had two issues. So last week we had an issue with the weekly release um, that we briefly mentioned um, from Damien. So what happened was with a recent upgrade of Kubernetes cluster, um, the, the Kubernetes cluster just can, um, does not read, does not handle the same way path in Windows containers. So that's what Damien troubleshoot and identify last week. So the fix was quite easy. Um, the thing is, if you want to understand a little bit more, and that's where I want to, to come, Damien wrote a really nice postmortem. And so if you have access to AKMD, we now started writing postmortem documents. So this is the one mentioning the weekly packaging issues. So we, we were able to release every packages except the Windows one because of the, the, the pass um, issue. So Damien explained everything here and that's really nice. So if we just look at what, um, so that document is now available. And so, and then we push the, the document on GitHub Jenkins infra slash documentation. So we started pushing every document that we write on ICMD on the Git repository. So we really consider the Git repository as a source of truth. So now you have a, a postmortem directory when we list the different postmortem. Um, so if you are curious about the Windows issue specifically, um, that that explained here. So as I said, we had the issue with the past with Windows and during the investigation, Damien trigger a second time the wrong job, which generate a second weekly release. So the second weekly release was, I mean, at the same content. Um, it was just the wrong documentation on our side. So if you have some inputs, Damien suggested some improvement that we could do in short term, medium term and long term. Um, feel free to participate here. We usually consider one week before after the, the outage so people can provide some inputs um, because yeah, it's easier to, to, to consider them because once the document has been uh, published on the Git repository, we just go back to, to that document um, for specific needs. But um, yeah, that's, that's something. The second, yeah, interesting to note is that Damien is proposing to uh, specific templates uh, for a document where he specified the chronology, the impact of the issue, uh, so a bunch of technical elements, what went wrong, and finally different improvement that he made. So I think it's a really nice template as is. Um, and we had another issue um, over the, the weekend, and then in Mark reused the same pattern to for the document. So the document is available again on the postmortem. So that was related to CI the Jenkins Dario. Just a quick, um, a, a quick, a quick note for for Mark. So we can use um, tag information here directly. And so you can specify a tag. So in this case, it's a postmortem. So it helps us to, to identify document directly inside Akakumde. So you have postmortem, uh, we have um, maintenance, and we have, so what were the directory? So we have postmortem, meetings, uh, maintenance, and runbooks. 
And also, we, we, we agreed with Damien to also use the, the tag uh, state to specify if we are open to input or not. So the idea is to collect all every feedback that we can have. And once we consider the incident closed and we don't accept any feedback, then we just consider it as closed. And um, it just we are just archiving the documentation for future. Um, so it just... And the final thing is, once we consider a document to be closed, we just push it so version, and then we can push the, the document directly to, to the Git repository. And we really consider the Git repository as a source of truth. So once we are ready with the document, we publish it, and then we don't go back to it. We still have some improvement to do on this Git repository to, to simplify the visualization of the content here, because it's only Markdown or ASCII doctor. But um, until now, I'm quite happy with the, um, the amount of documentation that we were able to put here. So for example, the meeting notes are published here um, each time after a meeting. So Olivier, I, I think I may have initially placed this in the wrong location. Did you or Damien put it here for me or did, did, did I actually get it in the right location and just get no? Lucky? So. so so you wrote you wrote the document. So the only thing that I did was to add the tags. So oh, at the post mortem, okay. uh, I, I specified the state of the document as closed um, because okay we are, we don't have we are not waiting for an input anymore. And then what I did is I commit the change. So yeah, I went to version and Git and then pu uh, push uh, to the Git repository. That's one thing that I did. And also uh, an interesting um, feature that I like from ACMD is the ability to have linter. Um, so for instance, if you put, I don't know, um, you see the, 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 the red button, it automatically run um, markdown, uh, linter for markdown, but it also run, um, what's the name again, uh, to, to correct, um, say, yeah, it, I mean, it can fix also small um, yep. boarding and stuff like that. Grammarly, uh, no, no, is it Grammarly? No, it's not, or? No, it's not Grammarly. It's, I, I, I'm using it on my machine. I just can't remember the name. Something um, that checks. But the yeah, word. so that, 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 that would, that's interesting to, where is that? Uh, to get spell check. Voilà. So you have a small button at the bottom of the screen where you can enable spell check and it tells you if a word is correct or not. Yeah, um, th th that was so. Just to come back to the postmortem, I really like uh, the fact that you both create first a postmortem document, so that was um, easy to to identify what went wrong, and also that you created uh, a, um, an incident on the status page. And so when we have an incident on the status page, we don't really have to wait for a PR review because the goal is to announce the incident as quickly as possible. And so that's what you did over the weekend and last week. So that was really great. Any question on the on those two post mortem? Sounds good. Um, the next topic is Freenode. Um, we started. I mean, I, I will not explain the current situation between Freenode, Libera, and all the other um, RC network. Um, on the Jenkins project, we started to migrate from Freenode to Libera. So we 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 created um, the equivalent channels and so on. I think uh, from the Jenkins infra point of view, we are almost ready to, to stop using the, the channel on free nodes. Um, the, the, last, the last element that uh, was not migrated was the Puppet notification. And I look at the, the Puppet server just before the meeting, restart the Puppet server, and now notification are sent to, to Libera. So I think we can all leave the Jenkins infra channel. I don't think that's our responsibility to communicate about the migration of the from Freenode to Libera. But on our side, we migrated the RC bot, we migrated the, 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 the infra butler. And we are not all, and most of us are now on, on the Libera chat. So I think we are officially ready. And because, yeah, because even the element that IO provides a bridge to Libera um, now. We can. I mean, everybody. Everybody can move. At least I'm. I'm. I'm ready to 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 disconnect from free notes. That was the last chance that I was waiting for. Um, any question before we move to the discourse topic? So 
Okay, the next topic is about discourse. Um, so as we mentioned over the last, uh, during the last Jenkins infrastructure meeting, uh, the company be behind discourse is now sponsoring the Jenkins projects. And we are at the moment experimenting with a new platform named community, community.jenkins.io. Um, if you are familiar with this course, we are really looking for feedbacks. Uh, we don't want to communicate too broadly right now because we are still experimenting with uh, first authentication mechanism, how people can authenticate on the service and um, the way we organize categories. So the first topic is about, so regarding authentication, we started a discussion on this course, so you can now join um, this course. And so we are wondering, where is that? So, so the, the the main the main question that we are wondering is first, do we rely on discourse to handle the accounts? So for instance, when someone creates an account, his username, email address, and so on, everything is stored is stored in discourse. Or we rely on a third SSO, like one the one provided by the Linux Foundation. Um, and if we rely on just on discourse, we can enable from discourse integration with GitHub, Google, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And so the question is, if we decide to just rely on discourse, um, which um, social network we want to integrate with? So I, I'm not going to to. I don't want to explain my 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 opinion uh, on this meeting. But what I want to share is if you have some insight, you want to participate to the discussion, feel free to join us on community.jenkins.io, provide some arguments about which one we should choose and uh, the one that we should not um, select. So that's one, one main area. And the second area is regarding categories, the way we organize. So at the moment, we organize a draft. So if you look at the categories, we have using Jenkins, with subcategories, um, discussion around the Jenkins community with subcategories as well, different ways to contribute, um, providing some feedback on the on the site. So at the moment, most of the discussion is on the site feedback because yeah, that's the beginning and we are trying to understand um, how it work. And so if you want to provide some feedback on the categories, feel free to join us and to discuss. And if you don't want to participate from discourse, we still have um, if you don't want to participate from this course, we also have a discussion happening on the mailing list, on the dev mailing list. Any question? No, so we can continue. Next topic is about Azure and Azure costs. So I look at the previous invoice and we are still above um, the 10K. Um, when I spent, I mean, I spent a little amount of time trying to understand what the cost is. And we definitely have 6,000 spent only for CI.Jenkins.io, um, which is quite a lot. Mainly used in time, mainly used in virtual machines and container instances. That's where most of the cost is going. Otherwise, all the other areas um, we did not decrease. I was surprised also to see that um, the communities cluster that we have running on Azure, uh, the cost of that service did not increase, did not decrease, uh, which is something that I that I thought that would that would be the case because we stopped. Um, running mirrors on that cluster. So because we stopped putting mirrors on the cluster, uh, I was expecting um, uh, a smaller um, network uh, bandwidth cost, but apparently it's not the case anymore. So apart I mean, I guess there are other services that are taking and generating traffic at the service. So I should spend more time to, to understand how we can save some money on that account. But it seems to me that the biggest cost is definitely coming from CI.Jenkins.io, so we should better um, use that service. And is that that we need to set upper bounds on AC, uh, Azure Container instances? I mean, the... I, th I haven't, I don't think it's possible to put uh, limits on the Azure Container instances. Uh, I don't think there is an option for that. Um, something that I think we should prioritize and work is 
So Debian configure an EKS cluster on CI the Jenkins .io with a fixed amount of nodes. And so maybe we, we, we would be able to better control the cost by relying on the Kubernetes cluster for our content, I mean, as a replacement for Azure container instances. That's one way to better control the cost. Um, the, the thing is that we cannot decrease the amount of workload on that instance, for sure. We have a certain amount of uh, plugin builds and more plugins, more core, more release we have, more builds we will have. The question is more about how can we ensure that um, we see an effect on the code? Because right now we are still blind about uh, on CI and Jenkins IO, we don't have dashboard that will help us. I think the information is present on the system based on the amount of metrics and dashboards we have between the cloud dashboard, our graph and etc. But we will need a way to measure to be sure that CI Jenkins IO directly cause these costs here on Azure uh, and break it break down by virtual machines ACS. Because we can try things, but we will we are completely blind. And so that's why we have an issue. Um, using static uh, resources means we don't benefit from the auto scaling, so we we might be able to control some costs at, at the cost of queuing the jobs. So uh, the QoS will be lower for the end users, uh, but maybe we can try experimenting on scaling up the machine instead of, instead of scaling horizontally, because sometimes having bigger machines means you don't have to pull. Uh, so much uh, Docker images, we can benefit from cache, etc. There are different leverages here. So not really sure which one, and I'm sure the being able to measure, to have a clear measure, to see if we apply something, does it change something? And that's the part where it's still, I'm not still sure what it is. Um, we shared that concern with uh, the people from Elastic during uh, uh, their demonstration last week. So maybe that could be an interesting thing in terms of observability because they have the amount at the Jenkins level. The thing is that the infrastructure only level metrics are hard to help us on that topic. We need a business view, which is from a Jenkins controller point of view, how much memory has been consumed for each machine, etc. And as, as Damien mentioned, it's quite difficult to identify how to reduce the cost because it takes um, several weeks, I mean, several days and definitely several weeks um, to show the changes um, in the um, Azure portal because, um, yeah, that's how it works. It's, so it's definitely a difficult topic to identify. Um, the next topic is about release.ci, but I think I wanted to cover um, the postmortem so we can remove that topic. Um, we also covered the outage with SCI container instances. Then Mark, do you? Oh, yeah, Mark, maybe you want to provide more insights regarding that outage? No, I just had to roll back uh, several plugins, and Tim Jacome has stated that he'll take a look at it. He wasn't able to duplicate it apparently. Um, so needs more investigation on what's at the root of it. I'll, my solution was roll back five plugins and that rollback was successful. Okay, thank you. Um, the next topic observability can be removed because we briefly talk about it um, during the Azure cost. We haven't worked on it with Elastic yet. Uh, we still have to organize a now follow up meeting with them. Um, still in the agenda. Oh, it's still planned, but yeah, we have we have to work on that. Um, the last topic that I briefly want to cover is um, archive the Jenkins.io to be available um, over Ersync connection. So this was a prerequisite um, for sort of for our mirror infrastructure. So just to come to go back about um, Archive. So archive the Jenkins .io is a mirror that contains every artifact generated on the Jenkins project since the beginning. So that includes Hudson artifacts. Um, and we couldn't use it from uh, get the Jenkins .io because in order to add it as a mirror, we, we, we need mirror bits needs either an FTP connection or a nursing connection in order to collect file metadata like when the file was changed, take some and so on. And so we had to temporarily remove archives of Jenkins.io from 
um, the mirror infrastructure. And so now um, the, the archive is available on AirSync. At the moment, it work with, um, it's only reachable from specific IPs. So we have a list of connections that we allow. Sorry. So we have a list of connections that we allow. Basically, those are connections are coming from package at origin, the Jenkins LIO, the um, get the Jenkins LIO, and, and that's it. So in the future, if a third mirror want to mirror every file, then you will also be able to, to get the files from that specific mirrors. So um, that, that would be yeah, helpful for um, in order to increase the number of mirrors. What does that mean is for instance, so if you now look at um, the output of get the Jenkins that I get here. So this is something that just worked before the meeting. So it's not really totally, it's not totally ready yet, but you can see that the mirror is now listed and um, is considered as down. I have to investigate why. But the idea is that mirror should have a very low priority and only be used when um, there are no other mirror available. So an example is if you go to get a Jenkins LIO, um, look at, uh, you want to download a Debian package, but a very old one. I mean, I'm pretty sure that it's unlikely that you want to, to download that specific version, but um, copy link, mirror list. For instance, for the Hudson underscore 1.300 version, at the moment, only archives of Jenkins LIO as that's fine. Um, the reason why it's needed, not, not to download Hudson, but because the mirrors that we provide, the, the mirror maintained by the OCLC network can only contain 100 gigabytes of, um, of data, which is around one year of, um, of files, which means that we delete files older than uh, around a year. And third mirrors have different approach to, to, to fetch data from us USL networks. Either they have um, a strict copy of the OS USL network, or they just keep downloading the, the files. So sometimes you have files that are, let's say, when, I mean, two years old, but only available from specific mirrors because they don't, delete, they don't have the policy to delete old files, whereas some other files are only available from um, I mean, where other mirrors only allows you to download a newer version. So that's why it was important to have archives at Jenkins LIO um, available for older files. So again, I'm not looking for Hudson's, but files in between. Any question? So in the past, there was concern that archives.jenkins.io was, was not able to handle the load if we fell back to it. Are you, is, has that concern been resolved? So, um, so it's not, it won't be able to handle the loads, definitely, because the traffic that goes to get the Jenkins.io is uh, in terms of terabytes uh, per day. So we, I mean, one second machine cannot handle the loads. We still have that limit on archive and I really see archive as a way to download all, all plugins, all plugins version. So, we definitely have to monitor the traffic of our archives at Jenkins.io because when we put mirror bits in place, we use archive as a fallback for get the Jenkins.io. And what we saw is when archives at Jenkins.io was used as a fallback, um, it was not able to handle the load and just crashed. Um, this is not something that we want today, but I think that um, it should be able, we should be able to handle the load. And if it does not, then we can still deploy an additional mirrors elsewhere. So there is a risk that this, this experiment you're doing now will show us that, for instance, a brand new plugin is released and falls back to try to get it from archives.jenkins.io and we may have a large demand on archives.jenkins.io. Did I? No, no, no. So, so the thing is archive is a fallback for older older version of the plugin. So new plugins are only coming, the new, so I'm not sure if you can visualize that configuration. Now you won't be able to visualize that. But the, the current 
mirror in the, the current fallback for mirrors is to rely on us as a network so those are um uh, yes i know how to visualize this normally it should be display here um So it's not display here, but the two fallback, the two mirror fallback are um, those two mirrors. So FTP dash and New York dot OSUS network and the, the second one. So this is the, the current default, but those one, those two mirrors does not have all the uh, other file. And that's where archives comes in. And so, um, so yeah, that's, it's that's truly it. intended only for older files, not for new files. Yes, um, our, yeah. But what I mean by all the files is file older than one year and even more. And so the idea is really if if there is no, I mean, if there if there are if there are no files available from a mirror, then ask to archives. And if 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 we rely that if we really realize um, that we put too much pressure on archives, then we'll deploy an additional machine. Um, that's that's the goal. So we are running out of time and running out of topic. Um, so do you have any topic that you want to briefly talk here before we finish this meeting? One time sounds good for everybody. Okay. Thanks everybody for your time and see you on RC on Liberado chat.